Okay, this is concept one of the energy flow unit. And we're gonna talk about enzymes and how they matter in biochemical reactions. So first, let's talk about what a chemical reaction is. Because when we say biochemical, we're just referring to a chemical reaction that's in a living thing. So chemical reactions are the breaking and creating of bonds between different substances. And to do this, it requires energy. The activation energy is the amount of energy needed to make a chemical reaction start. So, if we're looking at this diagram, what we can see is we're showing reaction progress or you know change over time here on the x-axis. We're showing energy level on the y-axis. In the beginning of a chemical reaction, there's a certain amount of energy, and then we have to input this amount of energy. So this red line is representing activation energy. That's how much energy you have to put in to get this reaction to start, and then that's where we're kind of ending here. We'll talk more about these energy diagrams in the future, but this is referring to that activation energy. I always look at this and I think of a ball rolling down a hill. If a ball rolling down a hill is a chemical reaction, then in order to get that ball to roll down the hill, I have to put in a certain amount of energy to get the ball to the top of the hill. So that energy I have to put in to roll that ball to the top of the hill, that's my activation energy. And then it'll get going from there. Reactants are another, and substrate are referring to the same thing. So reactants, substrate, same exact thing. These are substances that are being changed during a chemical reaction. They're going to be like the ingredients. So right here, if we're looking at reaction progress, so the farther we go right, the farther the reaction's progressing. Well, the reactant is what we start with. It's the ingredient. So that's always going to be what's on the left here. Whereas products are substances that are being made by the chemical reaction. So we're always going to show that on the farther end, which is going to be the products, because that's going to be towards the end of the reaction in terms of what's being made. All right, there's two types of chemical reactions. You can see these energy diagrams look different for a reason. Overall, all reactions are either going to absorb net energy overall, like a net absorption, or they're going to release energy overall. Endothermic are reactions that absorb energy. An example of a reaction that is endothermic is photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is a process of absorbing energy from the sun and storing it chemically in um, glucose. This is an example of an endothermic reaction. This is what it would look like on an energy diagram. So your reactant energy is here, your product energy is here. Note that the product energy is higher, so more energy in products than reactants, which means we must have absorbed energy, which makes it endothermic. We've taken energy in. Exothermic means you're releasing energy. Cellular respiration is a chemical reaction where energy is released. You know, we're breaking apart food to release the energy that's stored in the bonds. So we're going to start with more, and we're actually going to end with less in an exothermic reaction because energy is being given off. So let's talk about these two key biochemical reactions again. This is photosynthesis. And, you know, for this concept, you don't really need to have this completely memorized, but you do need to know, be able to recognize this and label some things about it. So you should know that photosynthesis is storing energy as sugar, and so we say it's an endothermic reaction. This is cellular respiration. It is releasing energy as ATP, um, and it's doing that as sugar is being broken down. So we say that it's an exothermic reaction. All right, enzymes. Oh, and the only other thing you may want to know is reactants are going to be on the left, so these would be the reactants. Products are over here. So these would be the reactants. Those would be the products. We'll talk more about that later, though. All right, let's talk about enzymes. Enzymes are a type of protein, so that's the type of macromolecule they are, that, and they speed up biochemical reactions by lowering the activation energy. So they make reactions happen faster by lowering the amount of energy it takes to get the reaction started. And so because they speed up reactions, we, they're also catalysts. Catalysts are things that speed things up. So enzymes are specifically proteins that are catalysts. They're also extremely specialized molecules that bind to reactants or substrate, and they help the breaking and forming of bonds, and then they release the newly created product. So they only bind to very specific reactants and substrates, and not all enzymes will bond to all reactants, and that's really important. 
also, enzymes are not changed in a chemical reaction, so they can be used over and over again. And this will make sense as we look at this picture. So like I mentioned, enzymes are very specific. It's like a key and a lock. All right, there, let's say this is an enzyme. It has a very specific shape. It has an active site, which it only fits one substrate or reactant. So the active site, we think about like the grooves in a lock or the grooves on a Lego. It only connects to certain pieces. The substrate is what would connect right in there. So we see this substrate fits perfectly so those can work together. So we call this the lock and key model because if the enzyme shape and if its active site is deformed in any way, then the substrate can't bind and that's not good. So enzymes can either break bonds or they can make bonds. So in this picture we see this orange enzyme and we see one reactant coming in and two products being released. So clearly bonds are being broken here. So there's my enzyme, there's my substrate, bonds are breaking, and then we're releasing two products. Enzymes can also help chemical reactions in forming bonds. So we've got our enzyme, our, we, in here we have two substrates, in the middle bonds are forming, and then one product's being released. Alright, denaturation. This is when an enzyme's active site gets deformed and it loses its very specific shape. Thus, it's going to cause a loss of biological activity. It won't be able to do what it was designed to do. So here's a very specific enzyme. If this is it denatured, it's not going to fit the same substrate like we saw in the previous picture. And this can be caused by extreme changes in pH, temperature, ion strength, solubility, and a bunch of other environmental factors. Sometimes they can be renatured, so they can go back to their original shape, but really not always can that happen. So there's a normal enzyme. This would be the denatured enzyme. All right, last thing is we're going to talk about ways to change the rate of a chemical reaction. First is temperature. If you increase the temperature, this increases the reaction rate because temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of particles. So the higher the temperature, the greater their kinetic energy, so they're moving faster and colliding with each other more. pH measures how acidic a solution is, and enzymes work in very specific pH ranges. And so if that pH changes, it can affect whether the reaction can happen at all or if it happens fast or slow. All right, number three is substrate concentration. So the more reactants you have, the more substrate you have, the faster the reaction because there's more particles colliding. Catalysts, like we said, are like enzymes. It's just anything that would speed up a reaction. It doesn't specifically have to be an enzyme, but just something that speeds up a reaction. And it does it by lowering the activation energy needed for the reaction to start. And then competitive inhibitor, inhibitors. These slow down reactions because these are things that compete for the active site on the enzyme. So they compete with the substrate and that will slow the substrate down from binding to the enzyme where it needs to. And we're going to do a lab where we look at three of these and how they affect reaction rate. And that's enzymes and biochemical reactions.